Hello friends, once again welcome you to my channel. So last video, we in the last video we have seen uh, that link register has some limitations that is nesting is not supported but using stack we can do so. Next today we will see one example where we will be using stack as a subroutine linkage method. What is subroutine linkage method? The mechanism that supports calling and returning from a subroutine. Subroutine is nothing but a function only, right? So we'll see that. So see, using stack, uh, here we'll see that calling and function and returning from it, right? Then here we'll be taking up some exam, uh, assumptions that see whenever I'm calling function, I am not going to pass any parameter or I am not going to return any value from the function on the stack. On the stack, I am not doing anything. Directly, I am not passing parameter. What I will be doing is I will be passing the parameters required by my function through my global resources. And in our system, global resources are the registers. Registers, see, in the the R, if I say R1, R2, and all, they are on. There is only one R1 is there. That R1 can be used by your function, by the function, as well as by, from by the caller, right? So what the caller will do? Caller will set the value of parameter in the register, and that register will be used by the function. This is how we are going to pass parameters to your function. So see, my assumptions are parameters are passed through general purpose registers. In the registers, we will be sending the, we will be setting the values and then we execute the call instruction and returning values through general purpose register. Whatever the function is computing, that will be put into a register and we'll see the value of register and we'll get to know what is my return value from the function. Next is, we are, uh, these two assumptions we are going to take. Another one is, what example we are going to do? Here we are going to add n numbers those are stored in consecutive memory locations starting from the symbolic address num1, right? So starting at this num1 address, some elements are there, right? Say num1 is representing 4000. So from 4000, some elements are there, 10, 14, 19, 17, something is there. So those elements will be added. How many elements are there? That is n, right? So the function is going to return the summation result to the caller. So whosoever will call the function, that will be given back the result of your summation process, right? So this is how we are going to proceed. We require where our elements are stored in memory, the base address, as well as how many elements are there, right? So what we'll be doing, we'll be using subroutine as a linkage method. So see, first suppose uh, I'm the caller, right? So I first I'll start with the caller. So in the caller, before calling the function, we need to set the parameters in the general purpose registers. So what I did, move n comma r1. That means whatever value is there at memory location n, that is my counter, is given to r1. So say r1 is holding your 10. 10 number of elements are there. So at memory location n, say value 10 is there. So r1 will be having 10. Then next is move has num1 comma r2. Say R2 is holding the base address. So say it is your 2000. At 2000, your array starts in the memory. Say it is 3000. I'm not taking 2000. It is 3000. Okay. You can take any address. I've just taken 3000. Then what I did, call listed. Wait. Then what I did, call listed. I'm calling the function. When I call the function, that time PC will be already holding the value, uh, this one value of this return address. And as part of execution of this call instruction, what we used to do, we perform a push operation on the stack. That you know. So what we will do, we will push the return address onto the stack. So return address is my 1012. That will be pushed onto the stack. Before pushing some value on the stack, we know that we need to decrement the stack pointer, right? So here I am decrementing it by four. My assumption is, my machine is byte addressable. Each uh, element on the stack takes four bytes. So each element will take four locations. So if it is starting at 2000, next element will be at 1996. So at 1996, we have stored our return address. This we have understood. Now see, what this we will do as part of execution of call instruction. Apart from that, we do one more thing. What was that? 
PC will be loaded with the starting address of your function. So your function start at some address. So that address is given to PC. Then what will happen? Next instruction executed will be this one or the first instruction of this one. Obviously, the first instruction of list add subroutine. So we will do that next. So we are starting with list add. Here what I am doing, the first instruction is clear R0. So R0, see R1 was having your 10 and R2 was having your base address of the array. That is say 3000. And here what I did, R0 equal to 0 I am doing, right? R0 equal to 0. Because clear R0 means what? R0 is made to value 0. Then loop add within bracket R2 plus comma R0. We'll see here one by one. What it is doing? Whatever is pointed by R2, what is that? The element. R2 is having address 3000. At 3000 address, at 3000 address in your memory, some element is there. Let's say it is 12. So that 12 will be used as an operand. That will be added with the content of R0. What is the content of R0? 0. So now what it will become? It will become 12. Right? Because R0 is going to hold your result. We did one operation. And what addressing mode we have used for this operand? Auto increment. So we did it. And after that, R2 will be incremented to point to the next element. So next element will be at 3004. Say so that element is 21. Right? So next, after adding 12, we need to add what? 21. Because we need to add all that n number of elements starting at address 3000. So first element we have added. After adding, we need to update our loop condition. Because we are going to do it 10 number of times. We did it for first time. And then what we will do? Decrement R1. R1 is holding your counter. So initially it was 10. Now it has become what? 9. Next see branch greater than 0 loop. So see, if the decremented value of R1 is greater than 0, then what you will do? You will go to this instruction. Which instruction? Add instruction, right? So you are going to add the next element. So right now, what is the value of R2? R2 value is 3004. So from 3004 memory location, we'll take 21. That will be added with 12. What it will be? 3 and 3. 33 will be there in R0. And then it will be pointing to the next element, 3008. So this will become 3008. And it will continue. Till how long? Till R1 is greater than 0. Once it becomes 0, you will stop. Right? That means this part of addition is done. Then what we will do? We Our job uh, required by this subroutine was addition of n numbers stored at consecutive locations whose base address is there in register R2. And how many elements to add? that is given in register R1. So that part is over. Branch is now not satisfying the condition. That means our job is over. Then we should return back to our caller. So what instruction we are going to execute? Return. So once we execute return, then what happens? That time the top stack content will be given to PC. So you'll come back here. You'll come back here. And where is your result? Your result is there in register R0. So from R0, the value will be given to some memory location sum or whatever you want to do with that result, do it. So this simple mechanism of using stack whenever we are calling a function is clear. So see, basic point you need to remember is see, whenever you call that time this push operation take place and whenever you do return that time your pop operation will take place. So when I execute return, pop operation will take place. Where the value will be popped into? It will be popped into PC, right? So hope this part is clear. Next, in the next video, we will be doing some numericals based on the concepts we have discussed in this video. So hope this video is clear. Here the key points are, whenever you are calling a function, return address will be pushed onto the stack, right? And for pushing some value on the stack, SP will be decremented. By what amount you are decrementing, that depends on what is the length of each element. That depends on your assumption or it will be given in the question. Based on that, you need to perform the decrement. So first decrement the SP and then at that address, store the value of PC. Or what? Or call instruction 
execution and whenever you perform a return that time whatever is there on the top of the stack that directly give to pc that will take you back to your caller this simple thing you need to remember then all the numericals we can do very easily so this much is there in this video and if you are getting from my uh, explanations then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you